what's going to happen on Automaton. DNS versus a laser. Let's uh, get this rolling. Riff Blushes on the Floor should be the name of an indie rock band. <laughs> I mean, there's so many things you could do with it. I really want to throw all these Riff Blushes up in the sky and just cover the room with Riff Blush confetti. Like, I, 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 I actually have a really weird, comp like, compelling... Uh, what do you call it? A compilation? A feeling of... A compelling feeling inside of me to just do that. I don't know. I just really want to throw Riff Blushes everywhere. I just think it'd be funny. But I don't think I can justify doing it, actually. <laughs> and you, then I actually have to tidy it up and then probably like, yeah, this is a pretty dumb idea. An obsession? Yeah. Compulsion. There we go. I have a compulsion, too. God. Yeah, mate. You know when that word really just escapes you? That was me all over right there. I have a compulsion to throw Riff Blushes all over the place. Top left-hand side. Sorry, bottom left-hand side. Our Blue Zerg player on Automaton is a laser. Up against the red Protoss to the top right. And Cascade, TNS. Game one of this best of three. How's everyone doing out in the chat? It's so good to see so many of you. Hopefully we can break through a thousand views tonight. I'm actually surprised. I thought, these, uh, I thought the European groups would do a little bit better with viewership, but they've been a little bit... Um, it's been a little bit... Um, It's been a little bit slow going, but uh, hopefully we build up some hype in the next few days and get some hype going in the tournament, and hopefully next week will be good as well. I'm not trying to say that the viewership is low. Um, I just thought it would be a little bit higher compared considering how well the Korean groups did and how much hype there was. But um, yeah, it's still, it's still so good to see so many of you. I think we'll push over a thousand viewers as we continue going through. Eon Dram's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good as well. I'm having a pretty good day. I'm having a good day. Again, if you Twitch Prime subs and stuff like that as well, which keeps the Wardy happy, I guess. Because, you know, the Wardy TV and Base Trade TV were actually all about the money. And we don't talk about anything other than subs. So if subs are coming in, you'll know we're happy. It's, uh, it's crazy, right? We're just money obsessed. A couple of queens on the way up. Link speed starting up from a laser as well, as we do see his Overlord. Reaches the main base, but does not really want to show itself yet. There's not much to be seen. I mean, the Cybercore finished up just moments ago, and that's something which a laser will know already in terms of timings. So not much to scout for, but there's a Twilight Council. That is the sort of thing you would like to see of an Overlord. And if a Stalker on the way out, it's not going to be here in time to deny the Overlord from seeing this. So the Overlord will get to see the Twilight Council, and that gives them a very good idea about the possibilities of what this build could be out of DNS. As the Overlord comes across the map, I mean, you enter this position where the Twilight Council is seen, and then it becomes either Resonating Glaives or, you know, some sort of Dark Shrine Archon drop opening. Both of those are pretty effective. Just you see this Stalker of DNS is going to poke away and push that Overlord down to the south. And Adept, shading forwards here as it goes in towards the natural expansion, but it's just going to cancel its shade. Dark Shrine dropping down in the main base as well, so... It is going to be that DT drop opening. This usually comes with a couple of uh, a couple of war prisms. You get two war prisms, one to the main base, one elsewhere, and you just kind of have two sets of Archon drops around. That's been the most popular way of doing this lately, although it is possible that you just see a single prism and a bit more kind of a regular setup like what we used to be seeing. It's just going to be seeing the war prism on the way up. Just going to be Corona boosted out here. And as the Prism gets Chrono boosted, we do see that Lair just about halfway done at the moment with that third hatchery also finished. Rotor on I mean, this is the perfect setup from a laser to deal with an Archon drop. He has the Lair, so he has the Overseer to deal with the DTs as well. And he also has the Rotoron, which will get Roach speed, so he has Roaches out, which are very sturdy and safe against the Archons as well. So you'll have the tools to deal with this, but obviously still needs to move the units around in the correct sort of ways to be able to deal with, uh, the, you know, that here and there. And DNS. He'll just start to send his Prism across the map. And there is indeed Warp Prism number two as well. It's going to go very harassment heavy with this opening. Seven roaches on the way up here from a laser. Prism about to arrive into the main and we'll just warp the DTs in over here. But again, the lair is up. Uh, Overseer is ready, although it's down to the natural at the moment. So it'll take a couple moments to get over here. The laser just preemptively pulls everything away. I mean, the DTs for a moment there attack the lair and then probably realizes, huh. 
That's not actually going to do that much as the Queen is in some trouble. It will take a nice little turn there though, and the Queen, can it be saved? That DT does not get the swipe. And DNS has to lift it up. Great run around by the Queen to stay alive. Really well done. It was very low on hit points. One hit from death. Because now the Archons will start to morph in. Meanwhile, the next warp in will come down to the bottom right hand side. And that'll be another set of DTs, another two Archons. And of course, to really kind of mix up this pressure and change up the direction it's going to come in from. Initial targets here from DNS. I mean, this Overlord is very easy picking. It's on the edge of the base. So there's no creep spread to really support units underneath it or anything. And boom, take it down, lift it up before the roaches even get in position. Meanwhile, DTs run in towards the natural expansion, but, well, I mean, not a lot of roaches here. Sorry, not the natural expansion, but the third base. But, um, not a lot of uh, roaches here or anything, but there's also the Overseer and the DTs don't want to take too much damage. DNS is probably also somewhat concerned with making sure these Archons are able to be kept alive. And, oh, boom, that's going to be another overall kill as well as he lifts right back up. A laser supply block there just for a moment. 54 drones, road speed coming through. Just gets another couple of overlords because he can't build anything right now. And just a couple of overlord bosses starting to affect him just a little bit. And again, this is what this Archon Open is all about. Slowing the Zerg down player down in their macro as much as you can, whether it's by forcing supply blocks, forcing units instead of drones, killing drones in general, just lowering that work account. All of that goes a long way to helping out as we see the prism will escape up the top side. And these Archons over here are going to get a couple of drones as well. So. Again, I mean, finally some damage really starting to be done. Overseer comes back in, so this DT that was just walked in is not going to have a great time. I like the idea, though. Didn't see a, you know, a Overseer there initially, so it was just like, okay, well, let's see what I can do with this. And, you know, he tried, but didn't manage to do all too much. Another DT here as well, so just really looking for opportunities wherever they can. Prism's still taking some hits from the Queens, though. I mean, this is nice, right? Because now this DT is going to show up while the laser is probably busy in the main, probably busy towards the third. And I mean, you show up on the natural expansion, he actually goes straight into the main. But if he showed up on the natural expansion, there was a queen right for the pick, and then could have got some drones as well. I mean, this works out too, though, because the laser has been a bit greedy and only ever made one overseer. So uh, this is kind of a little bit, not really how it should be, right? You know, you should have had more overseers when you know that it's definitely also more DTs being made. Especially when you saw a DT made down here. What was to stop you making a DT elsewhere as that prism just wandered forwards though. And that's two Archons taken down now. Really nice pick off. As the other prism will have to be looked after and babysat. The last thing DNS wants to do is lose even more of these tech heavy units. One of the great things about this open is it opens up in a way that creates tech units for the Protoss player. That can actually do be very effective into the mid and later stages of the game. While also creating a way for them to harass and keep the, you know, the Zerg player kind of slowed down. So they don't get out of control going into the middle later game either. So, you know, losing those Archons, that's a big loss. And it does now make the rest of the Archon drops very one-dimensional, right? Because now the Prism can only come in from one direction. There's not going to be a distraction at the, you know, elsewhere at the same time. And so it kind of limits what DNS can really get done with this game. So that is very painful there. As you see, that Prism just pushed up to the top side. A recall out, and the Prism goes back home. Cannon and a pylon will drop down here in the main. And as you see the two Archons just unloading off to the corner of this main base as well. A few Zealots are going to finish warping in too. And there's a few of these uh, Zealots warping. I mean, just making sure he's ready to defend against any sort of pressure from the Zerg. He must be a little bit afraid of potential Dropper Lords. And what a read that is, because a laser's going straight into Dropper Lords here. So, TNS have a very good idea about what a laser's setting up in towards at the moment. Hallucinations picking up some info and it would be great if they could see the actual other drop lords, but they are being kept very far back in a very safe position. The Hydra's getting rid of the hallucination. Very nicely done. Well, again, with disruptors on the way up now, we're on this new disruptor, which is a little bit different to what we've seen before. Of course, it's uh, very similar to the very old disruptor, but it's, uh, it's it really makes it a lot more viable in Z, you know PvZ, especially. Um, otherwise, kind of the old disruptor just got set off on a couple of lings all the time. Anyways, fourth base goes down here. The drop is not really being used at all, but they could be used to send a few units up to the main. That is what's going to happen, but already Archons and Zealots here means it's very difficult to justify unloading. And suddenly that means that these units are just kind of in overlords and not actually helping in the fight. So DNS pushes this back with ease. The laser has money in the bank that he'll have to spend. He chooses just to make more Hydras and a Hive and a Spire now. DNS lost a few units there, but mostly... Um, you know, Archons, Immortals, etc. Nothing too crazy. Again, more of these units coming down from DNS into the center. A couple of Hydras will 
have to be a little bit cautious too. As the laser gets a lot more lings on the way up as well. That Spire and that Hive still coming up. And we are going to be seeing those units from DNS. Just sat out towards what is now a fourth base. That's being built for the second time here. And Laser has quite a lot of space to move around on this map and to go into some different directions. And coming up to the top side at the moment, he's going to be pressing in towards that third very shortly. Zealots, Immortals, and Disruptors gathered together for DNS. As you see those Archons actually just warp it in. And the uh, Hydras find them right away. The Disruptors, they're in a weird position where they don't seem to know where they're going to want to try and come in from. I mean, DNS, for the most part, his army's attacking in from the kind of bottom side, so it's kind of forcing a laser further into the uh, third base, which kind of means that a laser doesn't have as much retreat potential, but it also means he's going to be over here dealing quite a lot of damage. Another disruptor shot only finds himself a single hydralist. Another disruptor doesn't find anything. And DNS is still being a very cautious Protoss player at the moment, afraid to come in with the rest of his army to really clean this up. And finally, he will move in, but uh, not before the disruptors go move commanding forwards and get uh, one of them taken down. STT did a little bit of damage over here, picked off a couple of queens. That now gets picked off as an overseer comes in. A nice little something from DNS to make a laser look back to home, just for a few moments, if nothing else. I mean, DNS up to the fourth base, so he should be able to rebuild these probes fairly quickly. Mm, again, it was one of those attacks where it's like, it's not terrible for a laser, but obviously wasn't great. At, you know, it wasn't really kind of winning for either side because the laser did lose a lot of units in this attack and yes he killed a lot of probes but again we're at the stage of the game where the probes are very easily replaced DNS keeps a lot of his robo facility units alive as well which is great because if there's anything that's difficult to replace in this scenario it is the robo facility units you don't want to you know have no immortals which so which means if you lost your immortals you'd have to stop disruptor production Obviously you want the Disruptors for an extra bit of splash damage. You're going to see a recall over the other side of the map here. Disruptor shot is going to be big. Gets a whole bunch of Hydras. That recall over there brought a bunch of Disruptors over. Now though, a laser is going to collapse on this army from another kind of couple of directions. Zealots warping in and well, the Protoss army is going to have to run up here to try and save these few immortals and these couple of Disruptors. Great play, great movement by a laser, but the Disruptor shot gets a big connection on the top side again. A couple more disruptors coming in and another few hydras going down means that DNS has enough to keep pushing through this. Man, great little one-two play from both sides there, honestly. I mean, first we're talking about a laser in a position where he was just kind of pushing forwards. DNS realizes that this push comes in the other side, so he recalls. And then a laser uses that, expecting a recall or something, and uses that to collapse on the army over here. But DNS is quick to respond as well. The disruptor shots went a long way. The force fields here kept a laser at bay for a long time too. And that allowed DNS the time he needed to get into a position where he could somewhat deal with that without too many losses. However, a laser has kept DNS very busy. And we see the first broodlords are now coming up. This is something which DNS will see happening with this Dark Templar, which picks up four drone kills. So he knows Broodlords are coming in. It looks like he is ready to try and just go and push for this, but there isn't any anti-air at all. I mean, there is really nothing here. Like, two Archons, a Stalker, and two Sentries? And these Broodlords are not going to be able to do much. DNS just wants to try and deny mining on this gold base, which he is able to do just firing across the mineral line. But again, there's the Broodlords. And at the same time, also a big counterattack of Lings and Hydras up towards the third. DNS is going to be pressed to kind of find a way to do something here. He does have a recall available, so we'll see what he maybe wants to do as initially this third base just gets taken down. A DT warps in to defend, gets taken down too. Overseer is attached with this run by, so this is uh, Laser thinking about all the possibilities. And now, I mean, the Laser has access towards the other bases too. I mean, this fourth base is in a lot of trouble. He's also just picking his way through the natural expansion, so looking very good for him there. See GG called and the Laser takes game number one of this best of three. Two. The rest of the uh, games here. Sorry for that. Just a little bit of uh, confusion and admin issue. They wanted to get sorted out. As we have to the bottom left-hand side, our red Zerg player. This is a laser from a Go Esports. And as we have to the top right-hand side, the blue Protoss from Cascade is DNS. Sorry for a little bit of quietness for a moment there, guys. One of the players PMing me just had to go and sort it out. And, uh, yeah, get this set up and roll and hatch gas. And a spawning pool coming in here from a laser. As you see, the overlord continues towards the upper right hand side to see what's going on.
All right, so apologies, still just trying to sort things out. Ay, 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 confusion and drama all over the place. The body multitasking is being put to test here today. Stargate drops down from DNS as a bit of a different opening than, of course, from the Twilight Council and the DT opener and the Archon drop that it led into in game number one. It's a very different setup here this time from DNS, as we will see him just shading out with his first Adept. Now, with the Stargate, he doesn't necessarily need to open Stalker either, so he can open double Adept. And that means he'll be able to go in towards a little bit more pressure across the map in the early stages, too. Actually, dropping down on the third. So again, that set up is the Stargate is just about to finish up here. And again, it's already rallied towards that Overlord, so it looks like we will be seeing a Phoenix just right away on the opening. So Phoenix pops uh, up into production, starts to be Corona boosted, and uh, yeah, I mean, everything opening and getting going as we'd expect it and wanted to for the very early stages of the PVZ. See where this goes. There's an Oracle on the way up in the production tab as well. Phoenix going to come in and target down the Overlord, so dealing a little bit of damage here. Overlord is going to get picked off. Gets to see that there is an Oracle on the way on the Stargate as well, so gets a little bit of information there with this third hatchery from a laser. About to finish up in the next few moments. Twilight Council drops down from DNS, so pretty fast to switch in a Twilight. Means he will not have the gas for a second Oracle. And this is generally going to be followed up by a very fast Robo. This could be a Resonating Glaive's actual follow-up, if you think about it. I mean, he's got another Adept on the way. He's been able to do two more Gateways, so he could just go into a lot of Adepts and really Glaives it up to really make them very powerful as they push across here. Some real possibility. As we sit back and wait to see what happens. The Phoenix and an Oracle fly in, and well, the first Queen gets lifted. allows the Oracle to get two kills already. We'll get three and four. Feels like the Oracle maybe could have got... Sorry, it gets five, actually. Feels like the Oracle maybe could have got a little bit more done. There's a couple of times where it felt like it wasn't firing very fast, it wasn't targeting or switching, it was moving a bit too much. But, um... Yeah, just going to be seeing the uh, Phoenix going back up to, uh... See the Phoenix coming to the top right. I didn't follow the game too much back then, but the timer of the minimap in matches ticked faster. What's with the change? So, the time uh, the minimap... So... This game used to run on Blizzard time. Basically, when they first made StarCraft, we always play on a mode called Faster. So, Blizzard time was, or the time in the game was always worked out on normal time. But because we played on Faster, everything was so much faster. So the game time ticked along a lot faster. Now, obviously, that's very confusing because you talk about having a 10-minute game that only actually took 7 minutes. Um, so it was obviously very confusing for you know, newer viewers that didn't really know about that and stuff. So they basically just made the change where the in-game time is now displayed as real-time. Um, and that's why actually a lot of the upgrades are actually very kind of funky kind of build times. Because a lot of upgrades and things finish with like an extra second on or something. It's like, Stim is 121 seconds, well why not just make it two minutes? It's just because that's its old time. It used to be kind of a more rounded number. And that was brought down a little bit because of the way that the Blizzard time changes. So basically the game just runs in Blizzard time, but we're displayed in real-time, so... It's um, it's one of them things. It's, it's kind of weird, but um, yeah, yeah. The baffling part is that they did carry it over the wings of liberty. Yeah, that really didn't make sense, but again, we just sort of dealt with it. Anyways, now it just represents real time. In the past, it was simply because it's just it was playing played on like the faster mode and we kept it like that. It was crazy. Anyways, the adepts did a decent job, but also. Now, Laser had these roaches out, and they really do go a long way to just pushing this back. But you can see that Laser's work count is 51 drones to 51 probes. So, actually, in terms of economy, this has turned out pretty okay for, um... For, um... A Laser here. Uh, sorry, for DNS here, because he's actually kept the Laser at a lower work count. And he still has the Adepts alive as well. So, it's not like a Laser's on a similar work count and DNS lost his entire army. In fact, these Adepts are still over here dealing a lot of damage. Two Queens go down. He's going to get a third Queen now as well. With eight drones going down in the process as well, DNS is really starting to take a commanding position in this game. Double Robo for pumping out double Immortal on the other side of the map as well. You see those Adepts continuing to get picked away at as they run off over to the right side. 
Oracle here from DNS. Also just flying around in the skies. We see those roaches picking up another couple of adepts. Of what's from a laser is coming over to the left side here, and roach speed coming up too. It's going to be finishing very shortly. Plus one missile attack upgrade starts up in the front as those zerglings of a laser start to head up all the way to the top side. Rav just starts as well. And we are just going to be seeing extra lings. Another Ravager being brought in. And uh, getting this ready to go. Another Ravager being uh, wolfed in at the moment as we are going to be seeing these units spread now. So it is just not middle than drones at all. Just going for the big counter attack here. Aiming to win this game with this now as we see the force fields dropping down the Immortals. I mean, this is where the double immortal production becomes very important, but a laser having some difficulty here is going to try and recall the other two immortals up this ramp so they don't have to run down into all of the units. All DNS has to do is hold on, but that is more easily said than done as the probes pull in. A laser will start getting a lot of damage dealt here. Phoenix lifts up a Ravager as well, just helping out however it can. Immortals still kiting around. There is two more immortals being chrono boosted out on the natural expansion. DNS could just do with another couple of warpins, but... He is not going to find it here. Another of his immortals goes down. And the laser's counterattack will just win the game. And the laser takes the 2-0.